Well, hello again, and thanks very much for tuning into my Classic Dirt Bike YouTube channel. We have some uh, really exciting projects lined up for the 2018 uh, Classic Racing season, so stay tuned to my channel for them. Uh, today I'd like to uh, focus once again on uh, Brian Allardyce's 1981 495 KTM. Now, Brian uh, always had a hankering to buy one of these 495 KTMs, and when he came across this one, he decided to do a complete uh, nut and bolt uh, restoration. Now, of course, Brian stripped the bike uh, right down to the sum of its parts and decided to start with the frame, which uh, was uh, sandblasted and then uh, a few minor welding repairs were done to the frame and then it was powder coated. And almost every part on this uh, machine was either renovated or renewed. Now this bike came with a set of uh, Pico handlebars and uh, these were original fitments when Brian bought the bike. Now the original exhaust pipe had uh, far too many dings and dents and welding repairs so Brian opted for this beautiful uh, Scalvini uh, pattern pipe which looks absolutely stunning. Now the original fuel tank on the bike was fine so it was uh, just cleaned up and a new set of graphics fitted and then it was uh, put back on the bike. Now the seat was actually uh, restored by the previous owner so Brian had nothing to do with the seat, it was just uh, refitted to the bike. Now the original shocks were not the right ones for this particular bike as they were 20 millimeters too long. Now these were substituted for a set of period correct Olins from JK Racing in England. But what Brian didn't know at the time but that these actual rear shocks were built by none other than legendary motocross rider Neil Hudson. Now the rear swing arm uh, never required uh, much maintenance, just a clean up and new bearings fitted. Uh, of course the rear hubs uh, got new brake linings and uh, new bearings and seals. Now of course these 1981 495 KTMs were never built for riders with short legs uh, due to their uh, quite tall stature. I think the original height from the ground to the top of the seat was uh, about 38 inches if I can remember correctly. Another lovely view of that uh, Scalvini uh, exhaust pipe. Definitely a piece of artwork on its own. Looks beautiful on this bike. Of course, naturally, the bike received a new set of uh, grips, uh, cables and uh, levers when it was uh, put back together. Now the original kickstart on the bike was well worn out so Brian purchased this brand new one from SDI KTM uh, which was uh, actually quite expensive because it cost them over £300. Now many of the bike's replacement uh, plastics were uh, sourced directly from Andra Horvath in Austria who is very handy for these uh, classic KTM spares. Now Brian tells me when he first bought the bike, the entire engine was totally covered in some uh, really hideous black paint which took him a while to remove, but uh, once he got the paint off there were some uh, beautiful magnesium crankcases uh, underneath it all. Now the uh, top end of the engine still had its original standard 
uh, 92.25mm piston although it was a bit worn and uh, so Brian decided a new oversized piston and rebore was the, the way to go so it was done at a local engineering shop now the original conrod crank and uh, big end were reused although uh, Brian decided to give the uh, small end a new bearing. Now the cylinder head was also fitted with a copper gasket which Brian didn't think was an original fitting on this motor so he removed that uh, when he rebuilt it. Now the tailpipe is one of the things I don't have much information about so uh, I'm assuming that this was the original pipe that came with the bike when Brian bought it. Now naturally the bike received a new set of uh, sprockets, new brake linings uh, on the back and uh, a brand new DID heavy duty drive chain. Now the original twin spark motoplat ignition was reused and uh, everything else for the internals of the motor rebuild including new bearing seals, gaskets, clutch springs and uh, clutch plates but all renewed when the engine was put back together. This of course was finished off by being sprayed with a high temperature silver paint and then it was all lacquered. Of course in their day these bikes were never made for the faint hearted these were an open class motocross machine and only the very best of riders could get the 100% performance out of these big massive machines. Now the rear brake lever and the uh, foot rests, uh, as far as I know, are all standard fitments uh, from 1981. Another nice view of those Neil Hudson uh, constructed Olin's piggyback shocks. Now these original uh, Marzocchi forks were rebuilt uh, with uh, new internals, but Brian had to machine a new set of PTFE bushes to replace uh, the worn out originals. There's no mistaking that's quite a formidable looking lump of an engine when you see it uh, from this low set angle and that beautiful Scalvini pipe once again. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong but I'm sure that these uh, 49581 KTM still hold the world record for the fastest dirt bike on the planet. Now many years ago, uh, VMX journalist Rick Simon and a few of his bike mad pals with a certain Rod Bush who was actually riding the bike, they took a similar 81 KTM to some obscure dry lake in the United States and with a bit of gearing tweaks and some light tuning they clocked a time of, wait for it, 123.75 miles per hour which I am absolutely sure still stands to this day. of course is the business end of this superb bike. Uh, that's a sprocket that has to deal with the many horses that KTM puts out. Now you don't see many of these 81 uh, 495 KTMs on the classic motocross racing circuits of today. Now the reason behind that is uh, totally unknown to me. Is it because there is not many of them going about or is it because you can't uh, get spares for them? I don't know. But there's certainly a very rare bike on the motocross circuits of today. Now these uh, pictures were taken uh, just shortly after Brian had completed the build of the bike. Of course the entire bottom end of the KTM motor received all brand new internals in terms of bearing seals and gaskets, uh, new clutch plates and springs. And I suppose in its day the uh, rival to this uh, superb machine would have been of course 
the fantastic uh, 1981 490 Maiko. It's a view of the uh, Motoplat twin spark uh, spark plug arrangement. No matter what way you look at it, uh, this bike is absolutely superb from uh, whichever angle you look. Okay, the front and uh, rear fenders are brand new items from Austria. Front fender there with uh, its support bracket. I must say, uh, Brian's made a stunning job of uh, the restoration of this very iconic machine. Now, the original plastic airbox was used on the rebuild of this bike, although Brian uh, modified it by uh, putting an aluminium heat shield on the right-hand side of the airbox to protect it from the heat of the exhaust. Now the original Bing carburetor you see there was uh, just uh, cleaned and then a new float valve uh, fitted and a new float and uh, it was uh, put uh, straight back into service. Now this bike uh, was also uh, featured in an article in the VMX magazine uh, a short while back. Uh, the actual issue escaped me at the moment but uh, it had a full feature with uh, pictures and information on the rebuild of this uh, superb machine. Okay, that's us had a look at Brian's superb 1981-495 KTM uh, restoration. Now we've seen what the bike uh, looks like, let's have a listen to what it sounds like. Now this, of course, is the first ever attempt of getting the bike fired up since Brian completed the rebuild, so it uh, may take a second or two to get the fuel uh, completely pumped up to the business end of the motor. <laughs> 